Hey, Arnold. So, you want to be like Doctor Strange? It ain't gonna work, buddy. Okay, yeah, so sometimes even I make mistakes. But seriously, dude, don't go in there. No, Arnold, stop! Congratulations, Arnold. You're now in the Dashti Loot Desert in Iran. This is the hottest place on the planet. If I were you, I'd start conserving liquids. There are three million sweat glands in the human body, so you're gonna lose up to three liters of fluid per hour. And all the salts in your body are gonna get taken out of the liquids, and this is gonna cause spasms in your limbs. Arnold, don't jump in there! It's just a mirage. Hmm, I guess sometimes there really is some benefit to your stupidity. Okay, so now you're gonna get cold. Let's find out where you are. This ain't the best situation, buddy. You're in the village of Oymyakan, Yakutia. This is the coldest place on Earth. A temperature of minus 71.2 degrees Celsius was recorded here. Yikes! According to statistics, 140 people a year here die from hypothermia. Come on, get moving! The human body temperature is 36.6 degrees Celsius, but in cold like this, it'll drop. And how? Your body's gonna try to warm up, and it does this by shivering. Then your memory will start to go. And next, your mind. Although, for you, Arnold, that's pretty much your normal state. This will be followed by a full sense of warmth. Arnie, buddy, you really need to start stamping your feet or death is gonna get you. Come on, Arnold, you can do it. Great job, buddy. Where did he go? So you're not busy right now. Let's play a really popular game everybody knows. The floor is lava, but here it's real lava. Cool, right? This is what an ordinary children's game can lead to. Global catastrophe. Don't touch the floor, Arnie. The temperature of lava can reach 1,200 degrees Celsius. You can move around using any items you see. But remember, the chair will burn up in just three seconds. Your bed will disappear in five, and your TV will melt faster than a single TV commercial. Come up onto the roof. Hey, don't fall off. If you fall into the lava, you'll get a serious burn that'll destroy all your nerve endings and boil your subcutaneous fat. But on the bright side, this does mean you won't even have time to feel how the lava burns you all the way to the bone. Get it together, man. Oh no, you idiot! Metal constructions will always heat up the fastest, you dimwit. But take it easy. Even if you fall, you won't drown. Lava is not as liquid as it seems. Counterintuitively, its density is even higher than that of concrete. As for walking on lava, you simply need special asbestos boots just like geologists use. Wow, it's getting hot! At this temperature, all the water in the oceans will boil and turn into a ginormous pod of fish soup. It's time to save the world's last fish. But really, the worst thing is not the hot lava, but what happens when it cools down? As it loses temperature, lava creates acid clouds of steam and gas, and they contain teeny tiny glass particles that are dangerous to humans. Arnold, wake up. I have a surprise for you. Of course, you know I'm your ally in battling your social phobia. I've decided to help you by moving you further away from people, specifically to the top of Mount Everest. The mountain's other name is Chomolungma, and it's the highest point on planet Earth. By the way, just saying, but you owe me $50,000. This is the average price for an expedition up here. To survive at the top, you need top-level equipment. After all, there's very little oxygen, and it's extremely cold. Go down, quickly, at least a kilometer. Hurry up, Arnold, but move as slowly as possible. 
Oxygen is only one-third the normal here. Try to save your energy. Lack of air causes the brain to misperceive time. Crawling five meters in three hours sounds a little too slow to me. Fortunately, the wind at the top reaches 200 meters per second, and it can help us. You can fly eight kilometers in just three minutes. But be careful, the ledges may get in your way. Lucky you, you fell into the trash. Everest tourists leave so much garbage on the mountain that the government pays $2 for every kilogram of garbage collected. I see you're trying to pay me my $50,000 back. Arnold, try not to breathe so much. At a temperature of minus 60 degrees Celsius, your lungs will begin to dry out. Mountain coughs are so bad they can even break your ribs. I'm sorry, Arnold, but climbers can't remove corpses from Mount Everest. It's impossible. Moreover, corpses are used as height markers for mountain peaks. Well, Arnold, at least you found something useful to do. I see you're really happy to be here, buddy, especially after such fiercely cold conditions. Uh, I think perhaps you're enjoying it a little too much. Hello, Arnold. It looks like you started hallucinating from a lack of oxygen, and someone brought you to the campfire. I'm glad that you woke up, but there are still six kilometers ahead of us. Unfortunately, I don't think you have the strength left to reach home. But wait, Arnold, I have an idea. You can repeat the feat of Marco Sifredi. In 2001, he descended Mount Everest on a snowboard. I believe in you, Arnold. Multiple broken bones and the last stages of frostbite. But we reached the Earth. Arnold, it's unbelievable. Come on, shout with me. Hooray! Ah! <laughs> Arnold, I was just kidding. You can't scream in the mountains. It can trigger an avalanche. Don't worry, Arnold. I'm not going to leave you here. You still owe me $50,000. What a... Beautiful day. What could possibly ruin this? Well, what if the Earth suddenly stopped? At a full stop, due to inertia, all objects will fly east, reaching a speed of more than 1,500 kilometers an hour. Also, atmospheric disturbances will create strong winds. But at the same time, don't forget, the gravity of the Earth will remain the same. The momentum of the oceans and seas will create giant tsunamis, absorbing 27 kilometers of land per minute. A complete day will now last a full year, as the Earth, at a speed of 29.78 kilometers a second, makes a full circle around the sun. Daytime, sunrise to sunset, will last for six months under the hot, burning sun, with the remaining six months being nighttime, with the chill dipping down to minus 55 degrees. With the Earth stopped, its centrifugal force will create high hills at the equator. Later, they'll disappear, leaving one solid ring continent at the equator, separating two gigantic oceans. But the worst thing that will happen will be due to the core of the Earth stopping spinning. After all, it's the large molten metal sphere, which, through rotation, generates the Earth's magnetic field. The magnetic field protects the planet from radiation, so from now on, being on the surface is deadly dangerous. Arnold, I swear, you're like a moss piglet the way you survive disasters. You need to find shelter. I suggest you move to the equator where it's safest. Hurry, Arnold, you can catch the last bus to the catacombs. Now everyone has moved under the surface of the Earth. Don't worry, these are real cities with improved security. You can even grow food here. Arnold, where are you going to live now? It looks like in the woods. Well, I'm not even worried. You probably already know that you got to stuff leaves under your shirt to keep warm, filter your drinking water, and no, don't eat anything, idiot. So, while you're not yet too far gone, listen carefully all around you. The noise of a tractor can be heard from three to four kilometers away. A dog barking two to three kilometers away. A train going by can be heard from 10 kilometers away. And BTS songs, well, you can always hear them. Yee, what's that, Arnold? Ooh. 
just look. This little kid, he's lost, just like you. After all, slow lorises live mainly in tropical forests. Don't even try to pet him, Arnie. Lorises lick their elbow joints, which secrete a deadly venom, so their bite can kill you. You should follow animal paths. It'll be great if you can find flowing water, a stream or river. Here you can get food by catching fish. Yeah, uh, Arnold, doing it that way, you'll be here all day. And as you can see, I was right. Night is the most dangerous time in a forest. Hey, uh, buddy, I think you ought to spend the night here in this tree. Yeah, it ain't the Ritz, but it sure is safe. In the morning, you need to get to a clearing so you're visible to rescuers. Finding a person in a forest is a very special operation involving rescuers, volunteers, and the military. The terrain is divided into squares, and each one is thoroughly combed. There was a case where somebody who was lost without knowing it ended up looking for himself. This guy managed to get out of the forest, didn't tell anyone, and joined in the search looking for him. You can be seen from the air if you make a fire. It's best to throw fresh foliage on it to make it really smoky. He's been wandering in the forest for three days now. All because he wanted to save money on a taxi. Oh no, Arnold! Arnold, don't tell me you're gonna drink from this lake. But don't worry, Arnold. If a leech gets into your digestive system, it doesn't have time to harm you. It'll quickly dissolve in your stomach. But you have more than one leech inside you, buddy. You're now the face of the social program, Affordable Housing for Leeches. There are more than 500 types of leeches in the world, but only three of them are considered valuable for humans. It would take just 10 minutes for 335 leeches to suck all the blood out of you. And you, Arnold, have one thousand of them. Every second counts. To get rid of the leeches, you have to drink salt water. Sorry, Arnie, I didn't have another bottle. Drinking water from that lake was a bad idea, Arnold. Even a leech is smart compared to you. Its neurons were used for a biological computer called the leechulator. It can add prime numbers, and you can't. But don't go rushing to celebrate, Arnold. It seems you've somehow attracted the attention of some really dangerous little dudes. I understand it's hard to believe, but you better not move, buddy. Arnold, let the bees bite you. Bee venom is cool. It contains many beneficial substances that can defeat even fatal diseases. But in your case, you're more likely to die from a heat stroke than from a thousand bee stings. Bees covering your body will heat it up to 47 degrees Celsius. Ooh, Arnold, you're good. Indeed, electromagnetic waves from a mobile phone can disable a bee. A bee is like a navigation system with a bunch of sensors pretty much like a tiny little airplane. Apparently then, when flying, just like with big planes, mobile phones must be turned off. In fact, if you put a mobile phone operating at a frequency of 900 megahertz in a beehive, then all the bees will evacuate within 10 minutes and never return. Imagine if a wave caught you not in the bathroom, but in the sea. The Black Sea is, in fact, also a large bathtub, just the size of 340,000 cubic miles. It would take about 243 million years to fill it up. The sudden movement of tectonic plates causes waves. The seabed rises several hundred meters, thereby creating the deadly tsunami waves. We're now located in Portugal, the highest waves in the world are formed here. It's like a cheetah, but in the world of waves, because its speed has already reached 60 miles per hour. One Hawaiian surfer caught a 79-foot wave here. For this, he got into the Guinness Book of Records. Have you ever heard of a killer wave? These are single waves around 80 to 100 feet high, which can't be seen even from a ship. They can appear suddenly and imperceptibly. Therefore, there's very little time to save a ship's crew. Killer waves can sink a ship in just one hit. 
Even Conor McGregor would envy such a knockout. The largest wave on record was formed in 1958 in the Lituya Bay in Alaska. The wave reached 100 feet in height and covered the mountains approaching the bay. As a result, all vegetation up to an altitude of 1,700 feet above sea level was destroyed. And this is the height of five and a half Statues of Liberty. On a shore, nature itself will hint at the approach of a tsunami. Animals feel the disaster coming and begin to rush somewhere in a hurry or behave strangely. Birds form flocks and fly away. If on land, get in a car. On a bike, run. Ask King Kong to give you a lift at the very least. It's advised to get to a height of 120 <gasps> feet above sea level. Arnold, you better get to the top floor of the Empire State Building. The skyscraper's height is 102 floors, or 922 feet. The elevator goes up at a speed of 700 feet per minute, so you definitely have time. Oh, well, that's also possible. Don't shout underwater, otherwise you'll choke. <sighs> Another evening session of degradation watching yeah. TV. So what do we have here? Elon Musk has launched a new rocket into space, and space has launched a meteor back at Elon Musk. Arnold, relax. You don't even know what a meteor is. A meteor is a large celestial body of cosmic origin. Their mass ranges from a few grams to thousands of tons. And don't be scared. There's only one case of a meteor strike hitting a person in history in 1954. And even then, it just hit somebody in their leg. It seems like somebody's volunteering to save the planet. And he's just bursting with enthusiasm. It looks like this episode will be the shortest ever and have a happy end. Ah, uh, no, never mind. Same old, same old. Seems like our planet is about to be destroyed. Or maybe there's another savior. Could it be Arnold? Excellent. We'll pick an outfit for you. So this one is a no. Definitely not this one. Yee! No, not that one. Now this one. This is what you need. Although we could just copy what Project Dart from SpaceX did. It's planned that in 2022, a spacecraft weighing 500 kilograms will ram into an asteroid named Didymos at a speed of 6 kilometers per second. The autopilot hasn't been installed yet, so you're going to have to fly manually and become a hero. Oh, wow, Arnold, you survived. Pretty much like all the other lowest forms of life, like microbes. But now there is a small issue with water. After a meteor 100 kilometers in diameter hit the Earth, the shockwave destroyed almost all life within a radius of 100,000 square kilometers. There was a huge release of sulfur, and dust and ash from all the destruction rose into the upper atmosphere and blocked access from the sun's mm. rays. You must be hungry. It's good that you kept your space food in the rocket. There wasn't any food. That's terrible, because there's no food left on Earth. It's good that you're in a spacesuit, since it's minus 50 degrees outside, and you don't want to walk here for very long. Watch out! I forgot to add that cockroaches have also survived, and they've mutated just a wee little bit. You better run to infinity and beyond! Arnie! Arnie, wake up! A giant tornado is rushing towards your home. Quickly, run out in the street. You need to get out in the open. Well done. Of course, in order to really save your ass, it would have been a good idea to hide you in the basement of your house. But of course, it's more interesting for me and our viewers to see what will happen to you inside of a tornado. Ready? And go! What's inside, Arnie? The width of the funnel of the largest tornadoes can reach 1,500 meters. You'll be there as it turns around. Every year in the United States, about a thousand tornadoes form, and only a few of them are truly gigantic. You're lucky again, Arnie. You're in one of those. I think now it's a good time to discuss low pressure and oxygen discharge. 
The atmospheric pressure inside a tornado is so low that your lungs cannot extract enough oxygen from the air. And after just a few minutes, you'll pass out and suffocate. Whew! Finally, I was really getting tired of your screams. Such rarefied air is equivalent to climbing Mount Everest without an oxygen tank. Mountain tourism is clearly not for you, Arnie. But inside the tornado, rather than die from lack of oxygen, you'll probably kick the bucket from a collision with other objects dragged inside with you. You know, flying trees, animals, cars, roofs of houses, and even entire houses. Everything that will meet on the path of a super powerful tornado will be drawn inwards and rotated at a speed of up to 500 kilometers an hour. And even if you imagine that by some miracle you can avoid these collisions with all this debris, and if an oxygen tank is no worry and you somehow survive inside the tornado, please don't forget, the tornado's gonna end sooner or later. <laughs> Relax, you're in the middle of the ocean with no one to disturb you. There's not a soul within a radius of even hundreds of kilometers. Don't cry, I'll help you survive, you little jerk. Just listen carefully and remember everything I tell you. First of all, it's absolutely necessary to find clean drinking water. The easiest way is to lick the dewdrops that collect on the raft. Not that, Arnie, that's bird shit. Alas, the number of such dewdrops is way too small for you to survive long. A more more difficult way is to find some kind of tank to collect rainwater. But you might die before it ever rains, so let's move on to the third method, and the most difficult one. Arnold is too stupid to pull this off, but you dear audience listen. From two containers, a bag and a weight, you can build a water distiller. Put the salty ocean water in the large container and it will evaporate, gathering at the center of the bag and dripping into the smaller container. And voila, your freshly distilled drinking water is ready. Arnie, time to go fishing. Eat everything you catch that doesn't look poisonous. Algae, plankton, jellyfish, and even small fish can be caught with just a simple t-shirt. Yeah, it might taste like shit, Arnie, but who the heck are you? to complain. I don't advise you to look at the ocean for too long. The sun's rays are reflected from its surface and will burn your eyes. You will no longer see the world, but the world will still see you. It's better the other way around. Arnie, you should build a canopy over the raft to shield yourself from UV rays. Thermal shock in the open ocean is guaranteed death. But, however, a storm is coming long before the sun can even begin to threaten you. To keep the raft from rolling over, put all heavy objects in the center and pray to Poseidon for mercy. Congratulations, you survived the storm. But still, there remains the problem of finding land. You know, I forgot to tell you, Arnie. You're at the furthest point from land in the entire world ocean. Poor Arnold's already rifled through the glove box, found last year's french fries, and is listening for the hundredth time to a Ricky Martin CD that's stuck in the stereo. I agree. It's appalling. Don't do it, Arnold. You won't save any time, and it's really dangerous. Say thank you, Arnie. I'm the one who saved your butt by stopping time, just like they do in cartoons. What would you do first in such a situation? Maybe go look in the Pentagon archives and find out if Armstrong really did go to the moon. Or maybe you dare to kiss Susie. Ooh. The main thing is not to end up in Japan. They love stopping time. I mean, they just really, really love it. In terms of physics, if time stops, then everything stops. You don't have to be a mathematician to understand that time is one of the components of speed and distance. If one of these values is zero, then all the others will be zero as well. Now, onward to adventure. Oops. Light particles and photons have also stopped. Accordingly, the ability to distinguish anything with your eyesight has disappeared. And you won't be able to drink any water. Everything is frozen. Here's another interesting fact. A stream of light which left Earth 65 million years ago is now 65 million light years away. And someone with a large enough telescope pointed right at the Earth can now see the dinosaurs. But I suggest we return to reality, Arnold. I've upgraded this Tesla so you can now travel not only to another city, but also to another year. 1986, for example.
It worked! We're at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant just a few minutes before the disaster. Arnold, bring the camera. You're going to shoot the explosion on it, and I'll post the video on YouTube. I'd say at least 20 million views are guaranteed. Hmm, is the battery already dead? Put it on charge. It's a European outlet, doof knuckle. You need an adapter. Or I guess not already. So, it's all because of you. It doesn't matter. You need to get out of here fast. There's a power bank in the glove box. Plug it into the car. Damn it, it takes at least 60 seconds to charge. Get out the protective suit. Just by looking at the area, you'd never know that you're in a radiation zone. But in fact, the radiation here is cosmic. That's not quite what I expected. Maybe you swapped bags with someone. With radiation above 500 rentgens, your hair and nails fall out instantly. Your skin turns red, and all those diseases you've got get worse. But you're lucky, Arnold. You won't feel much pain because you'll fall into a coma in three, two... Oh, you're already out. This is due to the fact that the radiation here is 20,000 rentgens per hour, and this technology can't handle that onslaught. The battery should be enough to get you back to the year 2020. Go! Hope you're doing okay. How's your blood pressure? Because the second teleport transfer won't wait forever, old buddy. Today, you're going to become one of the few who visited the surface of a lava lake and the only one to get out of there alive. Although, all bets are off with your luck, Arnie. All right then. Three, two, one. Open your eyes or you'll miss everything. You only have one nanosecond. You're in Africa at 613 meters above sea level in the vent of the seething volcano Erta Ale. Impressive, ain't it? The air temperature at the surface of the fire lake reaches 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt cast iron. Hey, chill out, Arnold. In one nanosecond, nothing's gonna happen, even with you. I mean, if you really run out of luck and stay there longer, your lungs will burst into flames at your first breath. Your skin will peel off. The only sensible course of action will be to plunge into the lava lake completely so that you pass out due to a pain shock and within 90 seconds, wake up in a better place. Not much of a prospect, huh? So stay put, bud, and Arnold, take your finger out of the lava. Oh, great. What now, Arnie? Want me to teleport you to the summit so you can enjoy the view? You hear that sound too? Arnie, get out of there! The speed of this fiery stream is one mile per hour. Hey, are you serious? And you wanted to go to Hawaii on vacation. If there's an eruption there, you won't be able to outrun the lava flow, even riding a hoverboard. Arnold, just don't panic. Control yourself. You have landed near the Fuji Dome in Antarctica, the coldest place on Earth. The temperature here sometimes reaches minus 132.16 degrees Fahrenheit. Under such conditions, a person's eyes and lungs freeze in just a few minutes. But fortunately, you have arrived here during the summer. The air is now a relatively warm minus 31 degrees Fahrenheit. Your body will cool down in such conditions by one degree every half hour. In less than an hour, your muscles will begin to shrink, convulsively trying to regain their lost heat. Then you will feel a terrible attack of panicky fear, and your legs and hands will burst from the cold. This is because the peripheral vessels have already begun to contract, moving the blood deep into the body in order to keep the most vital organs warm. But the tremors will soon pass, and you won't feel the cold so much anymore. But Arnie, don't relax. This is a false sensation. The fun is just beginning. A second, even more powerful attack occurs after a short while. Your body will begin to shake like a Boeing jetliner during a crash. You will then feel the effect of narcotic intoxication from hormones and endorphins, with some attendant confusion and, of course, a loss of coordination. Arnold, how you feeling? You're almost at the point of extreme hypothermia. 
your body is about to cease its last attempts to warm itself. In a moment, you will pass out. Additionally, you will suffer from some disorders in your cardiac activity and respiration. Your journey will end after you reach a body temperature below 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Death will come. Can you hear me? Arnold! Arnold! Try not to pass out. It seems we found a way to help you. Can you hear me? Get ready. We are now teleporting you to... Arnie, please welcome the audience. Oh yeah, you're dying. We need to warm you up somehow. Hmm. What if we go to the sun? Just for a nanosecond. The surface temperature of our sun is 5,800 degrees Kelvin. It sounds terrible, but in fact, this bag of shit does not even sweat for a nanosecond in the sun. The brain realizes that it saw a bright flash only 30 million nanoseconds after. 